I reviewed the Audio Technica AT2020 some time ago, and I recall not liking it all that much, really. I sold it and I never looked back. But I do realize that a lot of you do like the AT2020, and some even speak very highly about the upgraded version of the AT2020, which I have right here. And I think that I can vouch for those comments here too. So with that said, introducing the Audio Technica AT2035, should you get it over the AT2020? Well, let's go ahead and dive right up. Before we continue, don't forget that I have a Twitch channel that you can go ahead and follow me on for live microphone reviews and much more than that. But you're also going to find my Instagram and a link to the Tech Summit Discord in the description. So come join the community because it is a pretty cool one. We've also opened up a Patreon as of late where if you join, you'll be automatically entered to win one tech gadget every month in our exclusive giveaways. Details to that are going to be down below. Don't forget to check out the description for everything. Now let's get right into the video. And just so you know, at this month, in the month of August, we're going to be giving away to one lucky patron a Razer Siren Mini in white, as well as a piece of merch from the Tech Summit merch store. So do make sure to pledge to us down there because we would very much appreciate it. And again, like you do get a bunch of other bonuses too, so links to that down below. I'm going to be recording this entire review with this microphone using my Focusrite 2i2 3rd gen, so that you can hear what this microphone sounds like for content creation. But I'm also going to be streaming with it tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time, as in like the same night that this video comes out, so that you can ask all of your questions live. So links to my Twitch are going to be down below. Now let's do the unboxing first and foremost. It does come in this very wide box and inside you're going to find some foam. You're going to find some instructions, the carrying pouch that carries the shock mount and the microphone itself, no XLR cable or adapter beyond that. The exterior design here consists of metal for the entirety of the build. I believe that this microphone is just slightly taller than the AT2020, so it is still a pretty small microphone. However, we are going to have some physical attributes over here that separate this one from its cheaper brother. On the bottom over here, we do have a low cut filter switch, and we're also going to have a minus 10 dB switch. So there is some customization on the outside here, and I will be talking about the low cut filter in greater detail moving forward, but overall, this microphone feels pretty hefty. The the shock mount is made out of plastic too, and it is perfectly suited for the AT2035, obviously, which I can very much appreciate. Shock absorption with this is honestly fantastic, and I haven't had any kind of issues when I'm like bumping into it or anything like that. In fact, I'm tapping it right now, and it is doing a very good job at just like avoiding that kind of noise. So if you bump it by accident, let's say, then you're totally good. It's very sturdy, and I think that it has a very fantastic inclusion in this package. Overall, I am pretty happy with these in general. And now this is a cardioid condenser microphone with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and it is going to be addressed from the very front, just like this. So with this microphone, uh, we do get the full frequency range that the human ear can hear, which is still fairly common for microphones, but quite a few you actually still have a more narrow frequency range. So I figured that it would be kind of important to bring that up. And then let's get into the sound test. I'm going to be doing this test without any kind of EQ whatsoever, and I currently have this connected to my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, because my Yamaha MG10XU is busted at the moment, which also means that there just won't be a dedicated EQ test, unfortunately, but this is what this microphone is going to sound like on its own, completely naked. I like how this microphone sounds, and I think that, by default, it does have a very good sound to it, but I feel like it's maybe a little bit emphasized in the mid-range, which is making me sound a little bit more nasally than usual, or than I'm used to from other microphones, and things like that. But that won't be a problem for many people, and it wouldn't be a problem with my MG10XU, because that way I would be able to just EQ it out. But unfortunately, it's not working right now. However, I actually think that this microphone would suit a streamer or content creator very well because it does have a very good default sound to it that's, you know, 
clean, it's broad, it's more open, but I don't think it would be very good for something like a podcast, for instance, since it has more of an open sound to it, rather than a more broadcast, more compressed sound, which means that it should be easier to customize as well, like thanks to the way that this microphone operates. So if you do have an EQ and you want to work around with it, you can do quite a bit with this microphone, which I do very much appreciate it. And now at this point, I do have the low cut filter engaged, and it definitely does reduce the lower frequencies, which I do end up missing quite a bit because I personally really prefer to have a little bit more bass to my voice, so I personally would not use it. But it depends entirely on the person, of course. So the focus over here is going to be on the mid-range and the high end, where the lows are going to be pushed back in case you wanted a little bit less bass to your voice, and I can see how, how a lot of people might actually opt in for that, but I personally do prefer that more bassy, deeper sound uh, that you would get with the switch completely off. So let's go ahead and talk about some of my complaints that I have with this microphone. I thought that plosives could have been handled a little bit better here since the capsule barely has any kind of protection from plosives, but it's really not that bad either, so I actually don't think it's that big of a deal. A cheap pop filter that will fix that for you very easily. Also, I get that this is a condenser microphone, but sound rejection was not very good, so I would not use this if you need to have an AC in your room, for instance, or anything like that, because it will really get through the recording in a rather invasive manner. Some condensers can still have pretty good sound rejection, but this one is not one of them, unfortunately. However, here's going to be a test with my AC on, which is going to be all the way in that corner, so listen up. And this word here is, of course, going to be my favorite test because uh, it does get very hot over here. Uh, so having an AC like this is pretty nice. However, I can't have it on and record at the same time because then the sound is going to be too invasive. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So in conclusion, I actually like this microphone quite a bit. I just don't think that it's an exceptional option for the price, or even the best one for the price for that matter. I think that the Movo VSM7 has it beat when it comes to XLR condenser microphones in this price range, because that one includes more features and sounds better to my ears, not to mention that it does come with a shock mount and an XLR cable, as well as a custom pop filter for it that makes the combination just look so much better, and not to mention performs better in my opinion. So this microphone isn't really the best value around, but I would consider this to be a pretty good step up from the AT2020. If you only want to stick with Audio-Technica, then this is the microphone to get for that budget, but but if you are open to other brands, then I strongly encourage you to keep looking around because there are going to be better options, in my opinion. Now, that's not to say that I don't like this microphone at all because I really do like it. I'm just not necessarily impressed with its performance per se. So yeah, I can recommend it with a huge asterisk there, I suppose. And if you're interested in purchasing this microphone, then I'll be making sure to leave affiliate links down to Amazon in the description. And if you end up using any of my links, then it does help out the channel quite a bit, so I would appreciate that quite a bit. It would make it so that I can continue to purchase more, more review units like this and then review them for you guys, so I would very much appreciate it. And there's also going to be Abunda, which in case you would prefer to finance any of these things, if you end up using my Abunda link, and then you'll be able to finance something like this microphone for instance, without any credit card of your own, no applications needed really. So links to that down below, I would very much appreciate that too. And there's going to be Luster too, if you do need a little bit of help searching around, or if you just want some help finding sales on a microphone like this, or other microphones that are going to be just like this. So links to all of that down below. Also, don't forget that I'm going to be streaming with this microphone tonight at 8pm Eastern Time, so do make sure to stop by for that. Ask all of your questions live, because I'd be more than happy to assist. I would like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, beginning with the tier 3 patrons. Those are going to be Omar, Saad, Awazel, and Joe Moss. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a very long way. So with that said, on to the tier 2s coming right up. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, which are going to be listed right here on the screen. Again, a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create
create and the kind of content that we bring to you on a day-to-day basis. And thank you so much for supporting at the Tech Summit podcast as well. And just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too, and then do make sure to check out the links to our Patreon, where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast, but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed that is of at least $50 in value or higher. So links to that down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on Twitch where I do stream fairly often and you will see me there tonight as well. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you so much for watching and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy.